to be with failure and with success. So is it the ego monster and the ego destroyer? I think I can see through what you've written now, it's like a sense of deja vu sitting here. No. Success is not your own. How do you know you're successful? You only know it's successful because it's bounced off other people's prejudiced eyes. I don't know. Am I successful? So you go and you look at other people's eyes and if you see that they are looking, admiring you, you say, ah, you go, I'm successful because the price is admiring me, my friends are admiring me. Your success is never your own. It's always judged from other people. And how do you know their failure is lonely? Nobody looks at you. So you're not bouncing yourself against somebody. Nobody looks at you. It's sad. And sadness is created. And it leaves you, it leads to solitude. And I don't, it's, I'm not saying that you know who your friends are. And who, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that in failure, you are a far greater and more judge of yourself than when you are successful. Since when you are successful, you are bouncing off people for days. People are taking pictures of me. No more flashes in my eyes. What's happened? Then I will know myself. Then I will be able to judge myself. As long as these flashlights are going off my eyes, I'm just looking for them. Where are they? You know? I am a constant struggle to know yourself. You know? It's a constant struggle. It's a lifelong battle. And it's not you keep changing also. You know? What I was when I first came on the sad world, what I was. I'm now walking out of here a changed being. I've been changed by what's happening. I'm cha changed by every person sitting here. I've been changed by your energies. All our energies in that place where our demons and angels play with each other's demons and angels at that point, all our energies mingle with each other. So yeah, we only become egos because uh, individuals, because the ego tells us, hey, that's getting too philosophical. I'm just saying to you what, Let's all join hands, hold hands and hold our energies together. That's not what I'm saying. This is not a church recital. This is not God channel. I'm just saying that at one level, below a level, we are all part of the same ecosystem. We are all leaves of the same tree. Right? And one day all these leaves will be shed, but our roots, we are of the same stem. We are of the same trunk and the same roots, we're all leaves, but so at one level we all have similar energies, energies are the same. So please, please think right now very nice things about me. <laughs> because your what you're thinking of me right now is seriously, seriously at a level of unreason really affecting me. I'm both. Because I am an individual, I'm pessimistic at times, till I change my story, I become an optimist. And then I'm an optimist and something happens and I suddenly find my story changed, so I have to become a, I become a pessimist. But, I'm sorry, of course we're all like that. And there's no difference. The only difference to you and me is that you're wearing a blue necklace and I'm not. It's not, you don't even have to go to the soul. You have to go to birth. We were born the same. We don't have to go to the soul. You know? we, we are all the same. It's fine. One universal story that Yes. Defined by one word. One. You know what the world's most misunderstood word is? Anybody tell me? I love you. Love. Yeah. You see the moment say, I love you, you're defining it. And by defining it, you're confining it. And love cannot be something that is obsessive, it cannot be ownership. And we always, always, always mistake love for ownership. If you take ownership out of love, then you will find, because love can only exist in freedom. It's like this free bird. You can cage it, it's not love. It's caged love. Because oh, you, and we do that all the time. You see something beautiful, you want to own it. The human beings must be the only race that look at real estate and say, look at this. It's so beautiful, this land is so beautiful. And then you take white chalk and you start drawing lines around it and say, now it's become real estate and now it's become mine. Why is, what is it about us that wants to own beauty? 
What is it about us that we want to own anything that we fall in love with? Why? There's something about us. It's natural to want to own it. Why is it natural? Yeah. Why can't you be so uh, so much in love with something that you want everybody to share? Then you become ocean. Well, why can't you be ocean? Why can't you be ocean? Are you not Osho for your children? Do you not want your children to share in what you love? Have you heard of private inquiries? These problems people are very I've heard of that and lots of my friends do that, but I keep asking them, why don't you open the gates and let children play in it? And if you did, if you can, why did you block it off in the first place? Yeah, why block it off? Why not share beauty? Let's share beauty with the rest of the world. Yeah. You have. Is it good to be possessive? Sometimes. It's a survival instinct, isn't it? That's all it is. Insecurity. ये मेरा खाना है. इसको मत खाओ. चाहे मैं आज नहीं खाऊं, कल नहीं, परसों नहीं तरकुंगे. तुम भूखे मर रहे, तुम बैठोगे. ये मेरा खाना है. खाने की बात नहीं. हाँ. Share करना चाहिए. Share करना चाहिए ना. Land भी share करना चाहिए. नहीं. Last question for the evening. Every story has to have an ending. How should we the end our story? Yes, sir, yes, sir. That I started this by saying that which had no beginning cannot have an end. Okay. No story has we put a Mahabharat. Everybody says Mahabharat ki ending kya thi? But it was not written. जब महाभारत लिखी नहीं गई थी, तो there must have been ten thousand महाभारत being told, and every day somebody is narrating महाभारत to some person, and that महाभारत is different. उसकी कहानी बढ़ती रहती है, उसके characters और आते हैं, ऐसी भी थी, ऐसी भी थी. Then came in technology. Then there was this one invention called the Gutenberg press. What is it? Actually, now I can own it. So look what happened. I can write something, I can own it. But the cost of ownership was that you had to end it. That's when stories started to have a beginning and stories started to have an end. Because in order to publish something, you could publish endlessly. You had to publish something with a beginning and you had to publish something with an end. And therefore that question came up. Right? But now we have the internet. You can go back, Mahabharat can go on and on and on and on and somebody can, you can say, my story that I sow, I put a seed in now, and that seed can create an whole ecosystem of a rainforest. Isn't that a more beautiful story to tell that doesn't end? And that is uncertain, because all creativity is uncertain. If it wasn't uncertain, if you knew exactly what was going to happen in the next moment, and the next moment, why would you live? What is life all about except uncertainty? That's all it is. Kal chata nahi kya hoga. To phir kahani kya hoga? Pata nahi kal kya hoga. Okay? We just yeah. open the floor to the audience so you can ask questions. Shaker ji. Where? Here. Yes. Listening to your story, the feeling that I get is, you are, you have a guru, and I can recall a part of a clipping of your YouTube uh, on the YouTube I saw with Sadhguru Jaggi. So somewhere in your story, you are also influenced by highly evolved souls. Who are the ones who have influenced you most? I met everybody. I spent time with Sadhguru. I spent time with Amma. I spent time with Deepak Chopra. I spent time with others. But you want to know who my guru is? Yes. My guru actually has died. My guru was a leper who, who actually begged outside my house. And every day when I walked out of my house, this leper would be sitting there. His nose was being eaten up. Half his hands would be gone. 
And because he'd seen me going up and down every day, he would look at me and I would look, and I would look away. You don't want to see that. And then one day I tried to give him money and then he was my guru. Because what was he saying to me? He was saying to me that I am who I am and he is who he is and it is dominated by chance, chance less than a speck of dust. That's who I learned from. That his body was mine and my body was his and as long as I separated myself from him, I wasn't evolved. And the day I could say, this body of this decaying body of the leopard is also my body. That was my guru. He's dead now or he's disappeared. So what am I saying? Life is your guru. This, these things that you come across, everything is a teacher. Every moment is a guru. Every fear that you have is a guru. Every desire that you have is a guru. Provided you are aware of it. Awareness is your guru. And of course I walk around with all of them. Of course I learn from them. But there's no greater guru than constant awareness. That is Chaitanya se Chaitanya. And Chaitanya se Chaitanya. Yeah. Awareness. That is a very inspiring story. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Can I have a mic, please? Hi, Chikarji. Now I know why you're such a charming storyteller. Rachika has been telling me, but now I know why. Ladies, you agree with me? Yes. Yes? Great event, Nikaji. Can I tell you a short story? Sure. I saw your TED talk on We Are the Stories We Tell Ourselves, and it had a profound effect in my life. I'm a mother of three. My youngest twin is very fiery and feisty, he doesn't sit in class. Teacher calls me up and says, this child doesn't listen. So I pause and I thought to myself, I need to change my story. I need to change this child's script. So I started telling her how bright she is, how, how happy she is, how buoyant she is, how intelligent she is. And today, as four years old as she is today, if you ask her, Ayana, what are you? She says, Ayana is the most intelligent girl. Ayana is captain. In her head, she thinks she's the head girl of the school. And now the teacher says that she's become the monarch of the class. So thank you for your yeah. teaching. Thank you for all the spiritual sharing. I follow you on Twitter. It's a pleasure to interact with you today. Thank you and may you keep illuminating this world with your magical stories. Thank, thank you, you so I don't have a question. I just want to share this short story with you. Thank you, dear my love friend. Thank you. Jatika is a young dynamic member and a communication expert. Oh, wow. Yes. She takes wonderful sessions. Storytelling. Communication. Because you're shy and full of fear. But there's something which you know, every person has a dark side of, very personal side of. Every person? Has a dark story to say, or maybe a very personal story to say. You know, last night I was looking at the internet and I suddenly realized there is a very beautiful 29-year-old girl, one of the most beautiful girls I've seen, 29-year-old and one of the biggest stars in India, terrific actress. She came out and revealed that she suffered from depression and that she had to take medication for depression. She had to see a psychiatrist. Why she was doing this? Because of her. And if she, she knowing that she would be ridiculed, and she wasn't, she shared her story. And just imagine how difficult it must have been for her to share that story. She's a star, everybody looks to her as she's smiling, laughing, doing all these things. I suffered from severe depression. We all have stories. And what you'll be amazed at is when you share your story, you'll be amazed at how many people share the same story with you. That's, that's, we are not that separate. And these fears of